My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable two-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty dinners using everyday ingredients. So for dinner tonight, I am making this barbacoa. I have made this before. It's probably been over a year ago. And when I made this, I had pork and not beef, but true barbacoa is made with beef. And so I am using, it calls for two pounds of ground, of, I'm sorry, not ground chuck, of uh, chuck roast. And I am using this, uh, beef for carne. I actually got this on sale a while back ago, stuck it in my freezer. So I basically got two pounds of carne for $6.92, which is a great deal. Rest, the instructions call for you to brown it. And so here it is in the crock pot. And then this little packet comes with like a sauce packet and you're supposed to add water to it. So I added less water than it calls for. It calls for a third of a cup of water and I added about mm, three tablespoons of water. So I'm just gonna pour this over my beef and then it says to cook it on low for 10 hours. Okay, so the meat is done. Here it is, Howard and I tasted it and we actually prefer um, the seasoning with pork um, over beef. So I don't think I would make it with beef, with beef again. I'd use pork like I did the first time that I made it. So let me show you my plate first. I am eating mine on uh, Fiesta Flats, which are um, these taco shells. So they're just basically flat bottom taco shells. And you can find them anywhere. I've been um, eating these for years. And I have lettuce on mine, cheese, and I have some of this it's called Jalantro, and it's really good. We got this at Central Market, which is a, a grocery store here in Texas, and it is very tasty. It's jalapeno based. I also made some refried beans and rice with it. So the refried beans that we made are from HEB. These are charro refried beans, so they have some seasoning and vegetables in there, and they're very tasty. And then the rice that I made is um, using this, mi arroz from Nor. So basically you just kind of fry the rice in oil and then you add in a seasoning package. There are four in here in water and it turns out really good, nice and savory, has an onion flavor. And then this is Howard's plate. He is using a tortilla shell because he doesn't like hard tacos. And he put everything on his um, burrito. So he has the rice in there, the beans. He also added avocado, sour cream as well. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are eating from our freezer and actually everything that we are eating tonight is from Trader Joe's. We are having this chicken chow mein and in order to bulk it up a little bit, I also had some broccolini from Trader Joe's as well. So I just chopped that up and sauteed it and then I added in the chicken chow mein in the same skillet. And then we're also having a spring roll, which is from Trader Joe's as well. Um, a chicken spring roll and I just popped them in the air fryer. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So I am trying out a new recipe for dinner tonight. It is called one pan sausage tortellini. Of course, I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. But in my pan, I have um, a little over half a pound of ground um, Italian sausage. The recipe calls for like 10 ounces. I went ahead and cooked the entire pound, took some out, I'll use it for another use, um, and left it in there. And then I added in some chicken broth, um, a can of diced tomatoes. Now I am adding heavy whipping cream, and I'm going to add in some garlic. Just gonna give it a good stir. And I'm going to add in my cheese tortellini. This is from Trader Joe's. I like the cheese tortellini from Trader Joe's and also from Aldi. Just pouring it in. And, and it doesn't say whether or not to cover this. I'm not sure. That's all the liquid you're supposed to add into it. I think I will cover it and let it cook. It said for about seven to uh, nine minutes. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. The tortellini is cooked through. I was kind of, wasn't sure if it would because there's really no, not a lot of liquid in there. 
So now I'm just adding in some fresh spinach. And if you don't like spinach, you don't have to add spinach. Um, if you prefer kale or no veggies at all, it'll be fine. So I'm just dropping in, I said about two cups of spinach. And you're just supposed to fold the spinach in and let it kind of wilt. Okay, here's dinner. I tasted it and it is pretty tasty. It was very easy to make. I would definitely make it again. Serving it with some fresh corn on the cob um, and also some garlic bread. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, I'm kind of making up a recipe as I go along. I am making garlic bread, French bread pizza. So I have um, half of a loaf of um, Italian or French bread and I just cut it in half. And now what I'm doing is putting some butter on it. And then I'm going to add some garlic powder. Garlic powder. And some Parmesan cheese. And I am going to let this bake. I'm being generous with the Parmesan cheese too. I'm gonna let this bake for about seven minutes. Okay, so I baked the French bread for about five minutes, and now I'm just spreading on some pizza sauce. Gonna sprinkle on some mozzarella cheese. I have some Italian sausage. and some pepperoni. Last but not least, I have a few onions that I'm gonna sprinkle on top. And a little bit of dried parsley for color. Okay, I'm gonna pop this in the oven. Uh, my oven is set to 350 and pop it in there for maybe 20 minutes or until that cheese is nice and bubbly. Okay, so here's the pizza. I let it bake for about 15 minutes. And I probably should have put the onion, put the meat on top of the onions. That's normally what I do and the onions will get a little bit softer, but I didn't think about it this time, not having anything but this pizza. And then um, to drink, I am going to have this Clearly Canadian. Reminds me of my uh, high school days, love this stuff. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So I am trying out a new recipe for dinner tonight. I have this little cookbook magazine in my cookbook collection. It is from 1989. I don't remember when I got this. I mean, it's been within recent years, um, but it is from Chef Paul Prudhomme. He is the one that put Cajun and Creole food on the map. So the recipe that I am going to be making is this one. Let me move this place marker out of the way, is this chicken Diane, and here's what the picture of it looks like. And it sounds really good to me. I have all of the ingredients laid out. I've got um, chicken, I'm using chicken tenders. I've got some fresh mushrooms. It calls specifically for his poultry magic seasoning. I've got some parsley and I've got some green onion. I'm gonna make a few modifications to this recipe. One of them, he says, to prevent the pasta from sticking, pour a small amount of oil in your hand and then rub it through the pasta. That's that's doing a lot right there. So I'm gonna make some modifications and I'll let you know what those modifications are as, uh, as we go along. Okay, so I've got my chicken cooking in butter. It is fully cooked. Now I'm adding in my fresh mushrooms and the recipe says to let this cook for two minutes. Um, I will say that the original directions for the chicken wanted you to take softened butter rub the chicken all over and then rub the uh, poultry seasoning into that mixture and then pan fry it but all i did was just heat up my butter and then i added my chicken and then i um, just seasoned it with that poultry seasoning just to kind of save a step and save some dishes so i'm just going to let these cook for two minutes okay it's been about two minutes now i'm adding in the green onions the recipe calls for just the green part but i added the green and the white and I'm adding in the parsley. The recipe also calls for one cup of chicken broth. I feel like that's a lot of chicken broth because all I have to do next is just add in the cooked pasta, but I'm gonna probably add like a half a cup maybe, Then I can always go back and add more. So 
So I'm just gonna give this a good stir and it says let it um, cook for a couple of minutes and then to add in your uh, cooked linguine. Okay, so here is dinner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Howard and I tasted it in the skillet. We both thought it was a little bland. I did not realize that there is not a whole lot of sodium um, in the seasoning, so it desperately needed some salt. So I added a little bit of salt to it, and then I also sprinkled some of this chicken bouillon um, into it as well, and added a little bit of hot water because I still had some hot water from cooking the pasta and uh, that helped it out a lot. I think it's really tasty, and I would definitely make it again because it was pretty easy to make. I didn't feel like making a veggie on the side, so we're just having pasta, and then I popped some garlic bread in the air fryer. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time.